So I'm uh, here again with Dr. Michael Gator. This is going to be part two of our uh, hopefully unfolding interview series. So, mm-hmm. Michael, thanks again for your uh, time tonight. Back by popular demand. Thank so, you. Um, got some good thanks, feedback from Jack. our first Wonderful uh, to have you back interview. in our home. Pleasure to be here. Uh, so, I thought I'd kick off by, I guess, asking you if you have any framework or model for personal development or personal transformation. Mm, I do. And uh, I'm making the family uh, vitamin packets. Yeah, this right on. My, I mean, uh, I'll weekly just ritual. quickly yeah. let people see that. This is my weekly ritual of uh, creating uh, supplement trays for the family. So uh, There's a motto, you know, in uh, holistic medicine that the, the, the basic motto of the holistic practitioner is do as I do. So, uh, Very good. Practice yeah, what you preach. Exactly. Well, here it is in action. In reductionism, it's more do as I say, not as I do. But in the holistic paradigm, it's it's embodied example yeah. that gives weight to recommendations. Got it. So um, uh, a friend of mine, um, actually my Tai Chi teacher years ago, his father was quite overweight. And he smoked, and so my dad took him to the cardiologist to get checked out. And the cardiologist, you know, looked like Jabba the Hutt, <laughs> and and had a, you know, cigars open on the desk. Yep. You know, and was telling my dad's, my friend's dad, to stop smoking. There we go. <laughs> and lose weight, so that that the recommendation didn't carry a lot of uh, authenticity. Authenticity. <laughs> so uh, anyway. That makes sense. So do as I do. So these are this is our ritual. So your question was about a model for individual and collective transformation. With that. Yeah, I said that? I said personal transformation. Oh, personal Let's transformation. start there. Yeah. Yeah, hard to separate them. Ah. So the uh, so yeah, there is no personal transformation outside of the collective. Wow. And there is no collective transformation outside of the individual. Right. So they're, they're, so they're one and the same. They're actually one. Well, if you're going to get to non-duality, it's not just me and you or one. You know, it's it's that that, that the collective exists here. Yes. Um, and, um, and 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 in a sense, in a very real sense, our own. Uh, individual consciousness is the center of, of our world. Yes. And so as the center of our world, how we hold the world in consciousness mm-hmm. has very broad ranging effects. So that is the entree yeah. <laughs> into the model, which is very simple. It's not like I came up with this, but it's the only uh, model I think that has uh, True relevance uh-huh. today, uh, and, and I think it's it's the one model that I've come across that makes the most sense intuitively, yep. and um, and emphasizes another ideal of holistic medicine, which is personal responsibility. Yeah. So in short, um, the external world is a reflection of human consciousness. That's not like a, an un, that's not like a bizarre concept these days. Yeah. So that the external uh, out picturing or out manifestation in world circumstances is the out manifestation and out picturing of uh, the state of human consciousness. This is pretty basic stuff. Yeah. And therefore the the whole game is about changing human consciousness. That's kind of like Mo, you know, postmodern spirituality 101. Yeah. Uh, and so the where where the rubber meets the road, and this is interesting, um, is that our greatest leverage for creating collective change is the depth of our own inner transformation. So again, not a strange concept perhaps to some, but it, it, it emphasizes the importance mm. of personal work as the primary, this is the thing, the primary means of collective transformation. Wow, that's so, a big claim. It is a big claim, so maybe that part's a little bit of a stretch. You know, um, well, that's not, that's not to you know, agree or disagree, but just to, yeah. to make sure people kind of get what you're saying there, that... Yeah. The people's inner work, what what they're doing on themselves, is actually their, potentially their greatest gift it's, to it's, the to the collective. 
Yeah, as our friend David Lester uh, ha has taught me, it's actually 99% of our service in the world is our own internal transformation. Wow. And that leaves 1% for, you know, the one-on-one uh, -on -one work. Yes. Which has been, you know, most of my life for the past 21 years yeah. in clinical practices, you know, one-on-one -on -one in a room with a patient. And then, so that's some part of the 1% that's left. Yes. And the other part of the 1% of that's left is working with groups. Yeah. Which is emerging into, you know, most of my life these days as a speaker and um, yes. writer and all of that. You're working with more groups. So this is, you know, kind of a big deal because... Yeah. And just for clarity, yeah. on the 99 one, you're not suggesting that people spend 99% of their time no. on that, but like 99% no. of their value. impact and value, value. will be value. from that. Yeah. It's, a ten, it's, it, it's priority. Yeah. So it's just 99 of the priority because I don't think there's, well, I don't want to get too, you know, uh, uh, apocalyptic about this, but yes. I don't think there's time for one to one to one kind of horizontal, like you and I going out on Broadway, yeah, trying to wake people up one by one, handing them pamphlets, books, literature, DVDs. You know, come on, you got to get it. Yeah, You're right. a divine being. You should remember that and act that way. Yeah, <laughs> and you know, remember the law. We haven't been doing this, but we haven't been doing this. <laughs> <laughs> but yes. if we did, it would have some effect, you know. Yeah. And again, this is a real, you know, challenge for me because <laughs> my calling now is is speaking. Yes. And publishing and writing and all this like group, this horizontal group stuff where I'm working with groups is like my my main gig right now. Yeah. And so I have to remind myself that that's not where the primary action is, but. If I'm attending to the 99%, if I'm taking very seriously my own uh, inner spiritual transformational uh, work, yes, then when I show up at a gig, <laughs> at a speaking engagement, you know, Deanna's trying to get me out of the, the gig. Um, yeah, well, you're just back from a five-day speaking tour. Yeah, yeah, which I just is came back from, yeah, that was, that was intense. Um, but... If I'm attending to my own inner work, yeah, then when I show up in front of a group, it has immense weight. Yes, it has potency, it has embodied authenticity. Um, yeah, I'm speaking from experience. Yeah, and even if I'm talking about like a clinical topic like heart disease, which is my most commonly requested topic, is it? Then there's something that's coming through me at least vibrationally right. in presence Yes, that people that probably not the conscious mind no. of most people will sense but it will be a felt depth presence and authenticity because I've been doing my own work yeah so that's the car that's the this the other benefit so okay so there's two levels you do the internal work, and yeah. we're inextricably linked to the rest of the consciousness of humanity. Yes. So what we do, we do for the whole. Yes. And if I'm working with shame in myself, yes. which has been a, you know, which is kind of the global human primary wound. Yes. Is shame, born of separation. Then, uh, as I'm working, if as I'm clearing through shame, working through shame, processing. The, or, or meeting the experience of shame in, in divine identity. Yes. Then I'm not just meeting that for me. I'm meeting that for everyone working with that pattern, which happens to be every human being on the face of the earth. I could be working with less global patterns of, you know, well, I mean, I don't know if there are, I mean, uh, say, um, uh, doubt. Yes. You know, self doubt. Okay. You know, pretty, pretty common thing. So as I meet that in myself, I'm meeting it for the whole. So that's all like uh, level of significance number one yeah. of this 99-1 model. Yeah. Is that what I meet in myself, I meet for the whole, especially yes. those working with that same pattern. Yes. Okay. Part two yes. is when you do do one-on-one uh, -on -one work with others, as many of us do, um, healing arts, coaching, you know, transformational facilitation, mentoring, yes. um, spiritual guidance, uh, 
teaching, whatever. Yes. Then there's something that can come through of greater depth, potency, and authenticity because that I've been doing my, my work. And then in groups, same basic principle. So those yeah. are the two, the two reasons why this is significant. Yes. Is because of the global web of interconnected consciousness. And the second uh, is um, uh, giving uh, depth to our work in the world. Yeah, right. So, so this, yeah. Yeah, I was going to say, so would Gandhi agree with that? Totally. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He, he would agree. Well, yeah, because, okay, Gandhi's a perfect example. And I, I'm just going to get some water. Yeah, do. Gandhi's a perfect example. Now, because externally, he didn't, you know, run around a lot. <laughs> I mean, I'm not. I'm not his biographer. You yeah, know, I don't know every but he, he wasn't an American so. football player. No, yeah. he wasn't. He he took. I my sense of him and my understanding of him is that he took very seriously his own um, spiritual, religious, whatever practice. Yes. So that when he showed up in his pilgrimage in a town, and even if he was just like sitting there on the ground. <laughs> You know, a lot of things happened around him, or if he was sitting in someone's home, or, you yes. know, he wasn't, like, running around giving speeches all day and publishing, like, 37 books, you know, so, it, it, and it wasn't like he was, like, the great orator who yes. like, showed up and delivered a powerful message. It was, it was, a, it was, it was uh, activism rooted in depth of character. Yeah. So he cultivated in himself immense depth and height of awareness. And, you know, he, he, he lived in, in the place of oneness. And the fancy modern term is non-duality. Yes. Or non-dual consciousness, but it's oneness is the, you know, yes. old school term. Yes. Uh, and and he, that's where he lived. And, and it's because of that, that, that even, that, that, Things happened around him, and he inspired change in those around him. Yes. Because of the depth of his inner work. Same thing with his successor, hmm. spiritually, which was King. King, huh. different style. Yeah. And as he said, he got the the message from Jesus and yep. the tactics from God. Oh, he said that right. Yeah. 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 Because he'd be much more of the orator, uh, he passionate. Was, that's, that's right. But his his uh, main message was not civil rights. No. His main message was creating the, you know, the the brotherhood of humanity. Right. The sacred community. Which had to do with the spiritual awakening, uh, and you know, and he and he, you know, so that was the big the big picture, and he said, well, you know. We have to treat each other fairly and with respect. Yeah. You know, there has to be mutuality of respect and what have you for people to go that next step. Mm. But he was a much larger thing than mm. just civil rights. That was his handle, mm. just like my handle is in health, mm. but the message is a lot bigger. Mm. His handle was civil rights, but his message was a whole lot bigger. That makes a lot of sense. So, um, so anyway. Okay. Yeah. So let's say... I'm someone that's listening to this, and I'm like, Michael, I, I, I like where you're coming from. Either I, I'm there, I'm with you, I, I agree, or I'm open to what you're saying. Hmm. Where would someone start in, in this 99%, this inner work, this journey of personal and therefore collective transformation? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So the most important question and the most important starting point, which never ends, it's like a never-ending starting point. It's, it's with us at every step of the journey is the most important question mm. which permeates every culture, tra every tradition mm -hmm. and teaching that has some depth to it mm. on the planet in all of, recorder, or in all of time. Mm. There's been the primary question, which is, mm. who am I? Mm. And it's the question of identity. Mm. And um, nothing else really matters um, if you don't get the identity piece right. Mm. And because it's, it's primary, because if you forget who you are uh, and, the, and the largeness of your uh, uh, being, mm -hmm. then you, uh, nothing that proceeds in terms of purpose, values, mm -hmm. 
relationships, mm-hmm. interactions, character development, everything will be coming from a shallower place. Mm-hmm. So you want to have a very deep pool to start with. And that's the, 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 the endless ocean of true identity. Mm-hmm. And so my, you know, the way I, play, the way I, I uh, workshop this mm-hmm. with a group or even with a patient one-on-one is I'll say, okay, um, do what I do, say what I say. And then they'll say, okay, I'll put your pens down in your notebooks and just, you know, and I'll say, this is me. And the, the group will go, this is me. And this is my body. And they'll go, okay, this is my body. This is me. These are my thoughts. This is me. These are my feelings. And they're, nice. echo, they're, they're echoing this. Yeah. Yeah. This is me. These are my circumstances. This is me. These are my issues. Uh, if it's a patient, this is me. This is the illness. Yeah. Uh, this is me. This is my past. Yeah. This is me. And just to close it off, this is me, and we'll get loud. And, yeah, that sounds and simple but powerful. So it's a very simple thing, but, but the, the sole purpose of spiritual practice uh-huh. only has one core purpose, is to remember this. Remember how large we are. And as I say, you know, if we really got it right, our hands would extend right. a few miles out in each direction, huh. and then, you know, our hands would be really close together, like, you know, like a cork apart. You know, really, you know, like, yeah. you know, that's how large we are compared to what we think yeah. and what we feel in this physical capacity and our circumstances and our past. The largeness of who we are is vast. Hmm. And how and should people know that? Well, we only know what we express. Right. Uh, and so the way we come to know, you know, so this, I guess there's two paths. One is an intellectual understanding, a mental plane approach. Yep. Which is a starting point. There's a value to that, but it's it's only a starting point. Uh, con- conceptual frameworks, yes. belief systems, yes. uh, you know, models of transformation, models of this, and they're, they're all fine. It's all mental level yes. of function. That's okay. It's a starting point. The intent is for it to trickle down from the head to the heart, huh. and our connection with the divine is only through the heart. It right. doesn't, you can't reach you know, d- d- divine being or, or access that, 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 that reality through the mind. Yeah, right. It's accessed through the heart. And in, China, in the Chinese language, in Chinese medicine, the, 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 the pictogram uh-huh. for the heart, is the, uh, xin, yes. is the same word for mind. Mind and heart have the same That's interesting. word. Yeah. Uh, if you would call it that, and that is the and that is a human being in health, where the heart and mind are not separate entities. Huh. So it, that that we we that the the, the the thoughts of the heart are what hmm. uh, are are experienced, not just the thoughts of the mind. You know, I point up here, but the the yeah. brain is in the mind. The mind is not in the brain. Yeah. 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 Um, so uh, so the starting point is so, so as I said, there's two aspects. One is Get the conceptual framework as a starting point to know that you are, in fact, an eternal divine spiritual being, which is yep. a true identity, which are words that are nice and they sound cool, um, and they sound very impressive and that's very cool. But um, what really, where the rubber hits the road yeah, right. is, is, is that what is the nature of our expression in the world? What is the, and this has to do with the cultivation and refinement of character, the the uh, the expression of virtue uh-huh. um, and the development of deep integrity. So this is and and the word integrity at a basic level is is honesty, but at a deeper level means congruence yes. between our inner reality and our outer expression. Huh. And so as we begin to ex- as we begin to live big, I guess, or live from a bigger place and show up bigger in the world then we see the uh, results, the effects, the outer manifestations of our larger character, stature, nobility, honorableness, yes. expression in the world. We see it uh, externally reflected back to us. Wow, that's kind of cool. And what we express fills us. So yep. we are filled by what we express. And we become what we love. 
Huh. So where 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 are what we love above all is what we what we actually become. It, it, we're drawn to it, and and we become that. So as our as our um, openness, response, love, whatever you want to call it, uh, is to something higher, then we are drawn up, and that becomes our sense of ourself. Yeah. And then that gets landed, grounded, made practical and real in uh, how we show up in the world. Yeah. So that's the only, any, the only purpose of spiritual practice is to remember how large we are and to behave that way, yeah. so to, to, to reveal that to largeness yeah. uh, in the world. Very good. So how we do that is an individual matter. You know, there are different paths and different mm. methods and different teachers, and that's cool. They're all valid if they get us to that place of, uh, of taking absolute responsibility for the world, for the world in which we live. I alone am responsible. If nobody else is doing it, everyone else falls asleep, I will carry it, I will do it, I am responsible. So that's the attitude of mastery is responsibility. The attitude of victimhood is blame. Yeah. So, um, so, uh, yeah. so anyway, that's the, the basic idea. Yeah, very good. Yeah. So you said that that the only way to know the divine is through the heart. You can't really mentally conceptualize your way there. Can't reach that high. So yeah. I'm wondering, for someone who's interested in that, mm. what would you recommend for them, perhaps as a practice, to cultivate that sense of well, it, yeah, yeah, yeah. The, the the one of the most powerful practices as a way to kind of land this, yeah, is uh, uh, acknowledging that. Uh, deep feeling is a path to true knowledge of being. Yep. So, so, so it, it, it's actually what comes to us in our emotional nature is a gateway to uh, spiritual awareness. So how does that work? You know, how do we do that? Well, the first step is to allow ourselves to uh, deeply feel what's present. Yep. And this is not as easy as it sounds, yeah, right. particularly if you're like a guy who was taught, as I was, that, you know, the feelings are, you yeah. know, Keep them out. boys don't cry, suppress, you know, you know, and so, um, you know, I, I had the direct experience of what uh, Robert Bly said in Iron John. Oh, yeah. Uh, the little girl asked the little boy, what are you feeling? And I actually started with the boy asking the girl. Oh, wow. And so the little boy asked the little girl, what are you feeling? And the little girl had this rainbow of feeling, and she could differentiate all this mass of feeling. Oh, well, I, I admire you, and I have positive regard for you, and I, and I feel kindness towards you. And, uh, and, I, and she had this, all this, this, this diverse yeah. panoply of emotional... Uh, differentiation, which yeah. she could consciously identify. So you're like, wow, you know. So then the little girl said, well, "What do you feel?" And and as he writes in the book, the little boy looked down in his, into his chest, his heart, and just saw a gray mass of undifferentiated. <laughs> oh, like he didn't. Know. And so he honestly said, "I don't know." Wow. And so I, you know, I, I remember in my earlier years. Yeah, right. Uh, somebody would ask me, you know, like a close friend, "Well, how do you feel?" I said, "I don't know." I can't explain it. <laughs> because, you know, so anyway, that's step one. Yeah. Is to allow yourself to feel what's present and, uh, and to be open to that. And to allow yourself to feel that deeply, to, to get into the feeling. Yes. And again, you know, there's a lot of spiritual beliefs about, you know, feelings are somehow not spiritual or they're not cool or something like that. And I have had to learn and I'm still learning you know it's always you know it's a process yeah, of, course. Uh, of, 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 of knowing uh, that the, 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 the deep feeling is a path to divinity and of awareness of true being and cosmic reality yes so, um, so that's step one the second step is the is the, the, the crux of the whole thing which is to ask who who is feeling this and this is where we get to uh, know this is me and these are my feelings. 
Now, it's not that the feelings are separate from us. We're not. We're not doing yes. that. But they're part of us. Yes. But our true identity is much larger than just those feelings. Yep. And so we ask the question, "Who is feeling this?" Yes. It's and it can be a difficult question. But, but from the plane where we want to get to, kind of the, the punchline, the end of the, you know, the, the goal of the practice, is to get to the point where um, who is feeling this is our human capacities yes. of body and mind and heart. Um, they're all wonderful parts of our human, the, the, the human part of the human being. And uh, that's, that's the part of us that's experiencing this. Mm. And that from, from the perspective of divine identity, I am a divine, eternal, spiritual being, then I can observe that that's the part that's of me, that's, that's yeah. what's going on. And then that leads us to step three, which is to love and bless that, that aspect of ourselves, which is feeling this. Huh. And that de-shames... You know, and I grew up with a lot of shame, yeah. partly through the, the Catholic context, partly through, you know, just having pretty, you know, minimal, if any, uh, self-esteem or self-worth. You know, like I was kind of convinced that I was a, you know, piece of doo-doo. And so, uh, you know, that's, that was my experience. That, you hmm. know. And so, uh, so to love and bless that part of me that was feeling, it took hmm. the shame... Like, I shouldn't, you know, the typical thing, you know, where you try to spiritualize away the emotion, I shouldn't feel that way. Yes. That's a bad feeling. That's right. a bad emotion. Yeah. Come on. You know, that's very, you know, kind of kindergarten understanding spiritually. Mm. Um, and, and so uh, that becomes a path to wholeness, wholeness, integratedness, yes. uh, integral experience, when we can integrate these different parts of ourselves from the perspective of this is me. And so that's the final step in the process is to love and bless and enfold that aspect of ourselves which is feeling this. Hmm. And to love that one that's feeling this um, with the love that we might imagine, you know, the creator or the source of all being, the source of all life and creation, would love, does love us. You know, so uh, that gets into a whole other, you know, discussion, but... Uh, just to imagine how deeply we are loved and yeah. how completely, unconditionally we are yes. loved and then to love that part of ourselves, to extend that love to that part of ourselves which is feeling this, mm. uh, then is the basis for, for compassionate relationship where we can love and bless and enfold another person yeah. who is going through you know, yeah. something yeah. Uh, of deep feeling. Huh. Thank you. So that's one practice. That is, if you get that, yeah, Forget you're made it. in the shade. Yeah, yeah, yeah you're, you're good to go. Yeah. Okay, uh, one last question. Someone said to me the other day that their perspective on health is that really health is fundamentally about integration of mind, body, spirits, parts of yourself, the biochemical sure. process of the body. I didn't know if... Uh, you would agree with that, or you had anything to say around yeah, that? Yeah, I mean, you know, health is overrated, honestly. But, you wow. Know, I, I, you know, I, I'm watching. You know, I'm kind of like saying, you know, what, what do you mean by that? Well, you know, uh, or, or at least our our limited concepts of what health is. Yes. That it means being free of symptoms, right? Huh. Free of disease, free of complaints free of uh, problems and issues physically is a myth and, and is not the proper end point. I don't really talk about, and even in my you know, uh, radio show and yeah. my marketing materials and my client communications and my seminar descriptions, I've, I've been gradually eliminating the word health from everything Happy. and and replacing it with other words like Wellness, yeah. well-being, healing, um, uh, wholeness. Yes. Language like that, because uh, you have to have the right goal. You know, begin with the end in mind. Yeah. The end in mind is not symptom-free uh, or disease-free. Even the goal is fully alive and fully present. And which means you have to have the, uh, the ability or the willingness to encompass your physical experience in your 
you know, as, as, as deeply acceptable and completely accepted. I fully accept everything in my experience exactly as it is right now. That's big. That is. Right? Because the typical human nature yeah. pattern to is... To change it and should it. This is that. what's wrong. This is what I don't like. This is what shouldn't be. Uh, I'd like to get away from this feeling. I wish it wouldn't be this way. I'd like to get yeah. out of this state into a better state somewhere else. Yeah. And if only things were different, oh, yeah. then it would be acceptable. Right? Yeah. And that's a sh that is the guaranteed path to misery. Permanent misery until that attitude or perspective changes. Yeah. It'll never end because it's all about changing the circumstances. So then I'll be I'll feel okay. Yeah. So what what I've been pointing to increasingly in my teachings and writings mm. is let's let's go a little higher than that, and uh, and and not just aim for, not aim for health, but aim for um, wholeness. Uh, and and you can be you can experience a sense of purpose, inner peace, joy even, um, although that needs a little yeah. picking apart of what that means. But you can experience a sense of aliveness in the midst of yes. things not being perfect. Thoughts, emotions. Thoughts, emotions, yeah. physical problems, illness, this and that. I can be fully alive in the presence of this. Hmm. So as a teacher of mine used to say, we can be we can only be free of our limitations after we have learned to be free within our limitations That's very powerful. different perspective yeah right so i can be free now it doesn't take time it doesn't take you know things changing yes. in my body or yes. in my circumstances or a popular one in you Yes. And you, if you change, yes. then I'll have a, a, an okay experience. You know, so that's yes. the typical blame yes. thing. So I can uh, have a, uh, a fully alive experience now, purpose, peace, fulfillment, regardless of what's happening yeah. in the circumstance or in, my, uh, in this wonderful equipment, yeah. which may be malfunctioning or, or breaking down in some way. So that's the aim. So that's not health, right? I mean, at least how most people think of health. Yeah. Uh, so, so we're probably saying the same thing. I'm languaging it differently. Yeah. Um, but the aim is um, uh, inner peace, uh, deep acceptance, yeah. aliveness, and, uh, and, and revealing the highest and finest of who we are with our circumstances exactly as they are. And... Uh, and being, you know, as best we can. Yeah. And sometimes that doesn't mean necessarily being happy-go-lucky all the time. Yeah. Sometimes it's, you know, it's a little messier, but it means I'm fully alive to what's here and not resisting it, judging it, fighting it. Yep. Right? Because we, we spend so much energy resisting what is. Um, and, and so, you know, anyway, that's, I think, what I'm pointing towards when I mean uh, wellness well-being, aliveness, wholeness, yeah, healing, that good. sort of peace. Fantastic. Yeah. Well, fully alive, fully present. I've certainly been fully alive in, in listening to you this, this evening, so thanks for that. You, <laughs> you, you can judge whether I've been an approximation of anything like fully present. Um, oh, sure. But sure. Um, one last uh, radio blip. Where, if people want to find out more about what you're doing and the revolution that you're part of, oh, where sure, should they go? Oh, sure, sure. Yeah, yeah. Um, so the, the website is Gaeta, G-A-E-T-A. If you're Italian, is Gaeta. Ah, uh, Gaeta. <laughs> uh, Gaeta Communications. Yep. With an S. Dot com. So G A E T A Communications. Dot com. From there, or you know, you know, you can get to the radio show there. Yes. The radio show archives. You can sign up to be on the podcast and on the e list. Uh, all the seminars, publications, everything is there. My speaking schedule. Um, you know, I've got a lot of home learning programs on. I hate to say it, health, uh, but uh, but things related to yeah. to to well you know well being, um, home study programs and so forth, are all um, accessible through. There's a lot of free information there in the radio show archives. Some articles I've posted as a blog. Brilliant. Um, there's all kinds of stuff there. So that's kind of the main. You know, that's the portal. Of, yeah. That's the portal. Yeah. 
So go check it out, www.gatorcommunications.com. Yeah. Michael, thanks for spending time with us. Thanks so much, Jack. Look forward to the next one. Um, I so appreciate our time together. Thank you. Fantastic. Bye-bye.